off and they've taken time because they believe in you. They don't take it for granted. I think all of us should thank the North Valley Baptist Church for all that's going into this conference. Lord, I pray you'd help me to hate sin. 
I pray help all of us to hate sin. Lord, help us not to tolerate anything in our hearts and minds that doesn't please you. Father, we pray you cleanse us. We praise you for being our God. Lord, you are awesome. You are wonderful. Lord, there is no one like you. Lord, you have all might, you have all power, you have all strength. God, you're our God. You're the one and only true God. You're the creator. Lord, you're the sustainer. It's by you all things consist. God, we look to you tonight. We worship you as God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for the Bible. Lord, I want to thank you for the teenagers that got saved here at the conference. God, thank you for the good food we've had, the good fun we've had. Lord, thank you that we can enjoy our Christianity. God, thank you for the messages that Brother Rule brought. Thank you for the messages that Brother Swanson brought. Thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for how you've spoken to us. Lord, we come into your presence right now. And Lord, we know there's nothing in us that's good. God, we know that we have no abilities of our own to see anything really spiritual accomplished. Lord, we're dependent on you. So God, I pray you'd help me tonight as I open the book and preach it. Lord, I pray you give me strength. I pray, God, your word would be strong in the hearts of the young people. I pray you give them strength in their listening. God, I pray you'd be pleased to meet with us tonight. I pray you move hearts. I pray you touch hearts. God, I pray if there's anyone here not saved, that they'd be saved. And I pray for all the saved that we'd be helped. I pray you get all the glory. Please, may Christ have the preeminence. Lord, I pray you bind our adversary, the devil. I do plead the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, as it was just sung about, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood. God, I pray you'd keep Satan from out of this place, from hindering in any way. God, I do thank you for the dear people of this church, many here for their midweek service. God, thank you for them loving young people, supporting this meeting, giving towards it. And I pray they'd get something for the message tonight that would give them a blessing. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' precious and holy and wonderful name. And all God's teenagers say it. Amen. You may head back to your seats. Thanks, fellas, for coming. Please turn again in your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. I love the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel is a wonderful book. And it's a great book of the Bible talking about David. A lot of it. We focus on David. And so... David is my favorite Bible character besides the Lord Jesus Christ. But tonight, I want you to look at Saul for a few moments. 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. And I want you to notice verse 5. And again, give me your undivided attention. I'm going to keep it moving tonight, but I pray that God's Word would speak to you. In 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verse 5, the people were speaking to Samuel and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy way. All the preachers, kids, would you stand up? All the PKs. All across the auditorium. Number one, I want you to know I love you. I love you. Thank God you're here. I'm a preacher's kid. Let me encourage you. If you're a preacher's kid... Don't ever become like Samuel's sons that didn't walk in the ways of their father. I just want to challenge you. I, I'm not the guy, if you're looking for sympathy because you're a preacher's kid, you're looking at the wrong guy. I'm a preacher's kid. And whatever little extra pressure there is, listen, the benefits far outweigh whatever the pressure is. We all know the truth about that. It's a privilege to be, to be a PK. And it's a responsibility. And I hope that you will always follow in the way of your father's preaching. Thank you. And you may be seated. Let's give them a hand. I appreciate it. Sadly, sadly, the people said to Samuel, you're old, and your sons, they're not walking in your ways. And they made a request, now make us a king. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Israelites thought, you know, this just isn't working out. And so we're going to look for a king. 
Notice verse 22. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken unto their voice, and make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, Go ye every man unto his city. That's fine. Thank you. Perfect. Now notice chapter 9. Chapter 9. And he had a son whose name was Saul. We're talking about Kish from verse 1. He had a son whose name was Saul. And I want you young people to notice how the Bible describes Saul. Saul was first of all a choice young man. That's a great statement. Saul was a choice young man. A choice young man. Saul was someone who stood out in the crowd. A choice young man. Notice next about Saul. And a goodly. A goodly. Saul was a choice young man. Saul was a goodly young man. Notice this. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. Now, obviously part of this would have been his physical appearance. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Saul was the guy, you girls, I'm telling you, when he walked in the room, he would stand out. He was choice. He was goodly. But I don't believe it was just his physical appearance. Saul was a man at this point in his life. I believe he had a heart for God. This story begins in verse 3. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. 